The Defender is an exotic alien light fighter, Oster Citizen, created by the friendly Banu species to serve as escort for their legendary trading ship, the Merchantman. Despite being available to humans since version 3.7, the Defender is still a rare sight in Stanton. Hi, I'm Joro5, and in this video I will tell you what I like, what I don't like, and my final verdict on the Defender. We will see together how the Defender fits into the already crowded offering of size 2 ships. This video is not just a cold assessment of the ship performance, what you will get is my subjective, honest and informed opinion. You can use the chapters to navigate through the video, but I strongly suggest you don't skip any parts, because there's a lot to say about the Defender. Now, before we start exploring this fine ship, let's take a moment to discover the fascinating species that created it. The Benu are an alien species of traders, known to be resourceful, respectful and inclined to incorporate technology from other species into their designs. In Banyu culture, such an organization revolves around the Soli. A Soli is a group of coexisting Banyu who share a set of skills and function as a combination of family and guild. There is a solid that covers every aspect of life, including medicine, manufacturing, writing, politics, religion, trade, and so on. While the Benu do not have a solely dedicated to art, they appreciate beauty and place great importance on aesthetics in their design process. Banyu have a reputation for enjoying parties and leisure in their free time, and have a fluid approach to gender and sexuality. While they live less than humans, they only sleep for a few minutes a day, sitting or standing. But now, enough with the xenocultural studies, it's time for Things I like about the Defender Design The design of the Defender is the aspect I like the most. It may appear rough or austere at first glance, but a closer inspection reveals an abundance of intricate details. CIG designers have done an excellent job creating a distinct brand new structural design. As a species that emphasizes commerce over warfare, the Defender was designed with pragmatic versatility and sleek elegance as top priority. Once you pay attention to the details of the Defender, it becomes clear that it is a prestigious ship, like a luxury vessel manufactured in the far reaches of the universe. Universe. Descending from the staircase of the Defender, framed by its massive golden arms, elicits a sense of prestige in those present. Visual and sound effects The Defender not only has a sophisticated design, but also showcases a unique set of sounds and visual effects that capture an exquisitely alien feel. The sounds are a blend of Edge technology and raw organic power. Its engine roars with thunderous and enchanting force. The voice of the ship is equally captivating. Landing gear up. Engines on. And when engaging the quantum drive, the travel effect is mesmerizing. Shield. The Defender features a size 2 shield. This is remarkable because the Defender is classified as a light fighter, while the size 2 shields are typically reserved for heavier fighters such as the Scorpius or the Hurricane. In its default configuration, the Defender comes with a Sukhonan shield, a military-grade sea shield manufactured by the Banu that is not available for purchase in-game. Prior to version 3.14, the Sukaran was able to block 100% of damage, including physical damage, at the cost of slower regeneration. With the release of version 3.14, the exceptional damage absorption of the Sukaran was lost, as all shields were standardized for damage absorption and regeneration, making the Sukaran an average shield. However, it still has a remarkably low hit signature of only 17,000 units. For comparison, the best S2 stealth shield, the Umbra, has an infrared signature of 24,000 units. So, it is possible that whenever stealth mechanics are expanded, buying a Defender could be a way to get a low hit signature shield. Boost Acceleration the Defender has excellent forward and reverse boost acceleration, which means its main engines have access to a powerful boost that allows for quick acceleration and braking in a straight line. To better understand the extent of its performance, let's do some math. Since every ship has a different top speed, we can use the forward boost acceleration ratio to make an objective comparison. This is calculated by dividing the ship's top speed by the time it takes to reach it using boosts. 
For example, the Arrow has a top speed of 1235 meters per second and reaches it in 9.4 seconds with boost, resulting in a forward boost acceleration ratio of 131. On the other end, the Defender has a top speed of 1200 meters per second, which is reached in just 7.5 seconds, resulting in a whopping forward acceleration ratio of 160. This means that the boost of the Defender can easily outpace that of an arrow. In fact, only speed-focused ships like the Herald and 350R can beat its boost acceleration. The Herald, which is basically a big engine with a pilot seat, has a boost acceleration of 189. The 350R, a fast racer, has 195. The impressive boost acceleration of the Defender, combined with its size 2 shield, allows for effective inter-run tactics. Flight Model Let's make it clear, the Defender is not a top performing dogfighter in PvP, its roll and turn speeds fall behind even a medium fighter like the Hornet, which is only average in PvP. However, where the Defender truly excels is in the poor joy of flying, it has a relaxing pace while responding promptly and precisely to every command, and in atmospheric conditions it retains nearly the same agility as it does in space. It's all so satisfying to me. Quantum Drive Thanks to the large quantum tank on the Defender, you can get the most out of the fastest, most full angry SS1 quantum drives. With the best SS1 quantum drive, the VK00, you can make two round trips between Microtech and Arcor before needing to refuel. The Defender comes standard with the Beacon Quantum Drive, which is only slightly inferior to the VK00, making the upgrade unnecessary. 90s Tribute in my eyes, the Defender is inspired by classic 90s sci-fi movies, with its sounds and interiors reminiscent of the alien fighters from Independence Day, and its intricate design and texture inspired by the Egyptian styles of Stargate. To me, stepping into the Defender is like stepping into one of those classic movies. Versatility with no cargo bay, the Defender may not be considered a true multi-role ship, but it still offers a unique set of capabilities. The spacious central body can hold several packages, making it ideal for delivery missions. It can also comfortably transport up to three additional passengers with two beds and a second driver's seat, making it a great option for taxing small groups of players and accessing player beacon missions. The Defender may not be the best choice for PvP combat, but it is very effective against NPCs. A skilled pilot can easily handle ERT group bounties, however, VHRT bounties are the ideal choice when using this ship, as they can be completed more quickly, resulting in greater rewards over time. All of these features and capabilities have made the Banu Defender a great daily companion for many of its owners, including myself. A void ship. If the Defender were a human design ship, it would probably be a dense, claustrophobic single seater with a boxy sharp shape. Instead, the Defender is a spacious vessel created by organic like structures woven into curved surfaces. There are few spaces that are filled in. The ship is essentially made up of voids, like a shellfish without flesh. The hull is indeed an empty shell, as are the arms. Examining the ship in photo mode, I cannot even guess where the large quantum and hydrogen tanks might be. As for the avionics, they are officially located behind the locket panel and are not yet accessible. Anyway, the reason I like this hollow strutter thing is because it conveys a sense of advanced and exotic alien design. And now, the things I don't like about the Defender. Fragility. The reason why the Defender features a size 2 shield is due to the intention of the developers to create a fighter with a strong shield and weak hull. What is interesting is how the fragility was achieved. The Defender has 14,000 total HP, which is not a lot, but not a little either. It has 4,000 more HP than the Gladius and the same HP as the Buccaneer, yet it is undeniably more fragile. Why? 
Many think it goes by a large cross section that makes the Defender easier to hit. However, a side by side comparison with the Gladius shows that the cross section of the Defender is not significantly larger. So, the fragility of the Defender must lie elsewhere. First of all, prior to version 318, the Defender had no damage reduction bonuses, while most of the fighters had at least 5% or 10% protection against physical and energy damage. But the most crucial factor is another one that I observed through experience. The Defender has very few parts and lacks redundancy. In fact, the Defender has only 6 parts, while the Gladius has 35 and the Buccaneer 20. And that's not all. Looking at the part in question, it becomes clear that the central body of the Defender is composed mainly of critical parts, while the two arms, although not critical, do not provide significant protection to the body and contain important maneuvering thrusters. So, the critical parts of the Defender are directly exposed to enemy fire, and all these parts together are the size of an arrow. In other words, the difficulty of hitting the main body of the Defender, which consists only of critical parts is comparable to that of hitting an entire arrow, but the latter spreads the damage over a total of 7 parts, some of which are not critical. In summary, the lack of redundant parts coupled with the exposure of the central body to enemy fire makes the defender particularly vulnerable once its shield is depleted. The high boost acceleration of the defender provides some mitigation of this weakness. EM Signature the electromagnetic signature of the Defender is quite high, even after a deduction implemented in version 318. It is comparable to that of the Huck, which has EMP, or the Mantis, which has quantum interdiction. This makes the Defender particularly vulnerable to EM missiles, which are the most tenacious against small ships. Few Bennu Components According to my research, the Defender is an actual Bannu ship and not a recreated alien design adapted for human use, such as the Talon. So, it's a little disappointing to find out that most of the components installed on the Defender are human-made. The only body-made components are the weapons and the shield which unfortunately are not the best of the Defender. And just to be clear, this was not always the case, as previously mentioned, the Sukuran shield used to be able to completely absorb all damage, offset by a longer regeneration time. This ability has since been lost and the shield is now average at best. The Sins 2 cannons fared no better. Originally intended to be a long-range high-damage weapons, they were heavily nerfed to a pale shadow of their former selves. They became semi-automatic sucker punch cannons, dealing less DPS and alpha damage but with twice the EM signature. The lack of Banyu components is somewhat sad, as the Defender could have been a source of exotic components with unique features that could be incorporated into other setups, allowing for greater customization. After all, the Banyu are known for their ability to integrate the best technology from other species. Identity Crisis the Defender is officially classified as a light fighter, but some players consider it more of a medium fighter due to its size 2 shield, 4 side 3 weapon R points and 5500 capacitor. Honestly, I think the Defender falls short in both classes because it lacks the durability of a true medium fighter and the agility of a true light fighter. Given its versatility, I'm more inclined to classify the Defender as a multi-role ship. The reason I don't like the ambiguity surrounding its class is that it feels like a symptom of the developer's unclear vision for the ship. Giving a ship the right class is very important, because it makes balancing easier and more understandable for players to judge the ship. It also gives a more clear idea of what the ship can do in terms of gameplay. Hydrogen Consumption The Defender has an insatiable appetite for hydrogen, and despite its large fuel tank, the supply runs out quickly. Refilling just a quarter tank can cost up to 1000 UEC. Its consumption is so high that it exceeds that of larger ships, like the Freelancer, and is on par with that of the Andromeda. High hydrogen consumption limits the running time of the Defender and results in a high operating cost. Monitor setup. 
The Defender has a well-designed cockpit with excellent visibility and four monitors that are always visible. However, not all the monitors are configured to display useful information. This means that you must reconfigure the monitors each time you claim the ship. Beds but not toilet. According to the lore, the Banyu value hospitality and enjoy interacting with other species. While they do not have the same biological need for beds and toilets as humans, they still provide appropriate accommodation for other species. So I'm not surprised to find two beds in the Defender, even though the Banyu don't lie down to sleep. What does surprise me is the lack of a small toilet. The fact that the Defender has not one, but two beds suggests that it is designed for extended use, which makes the lack of a toilet all the more noticeable. Expensive While the Defender is a versatile ship, it does not offer any special features that would justify its high price point. This is especially evident when you consider that the Defender costs nearly a million credits more than ships like the Vanguard Sentinel, which is a highly specialized military ship, and the Prospector, which is a mining ship. This can make it a tough decision for players looking for the best value for the credits. Moreover, if versatility is what one is looking for, a Catras Black, which is half the price of the Defender, is an attractive option. Graphic Defect of the Exhaust The left side maneuvering thruster exhaust on the Defender is angled the same as the right side, which is a small but noticeable flaw. It is surprising that such a small bug persists from patch to patch, considering how easy it will be to fix. Final Verdict Before proceeding with the final verdict, consider to like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Creating these videos requires a significant amount of effort and showing your support is just a click away. Thank you very much. Now let's dive into the conclusion. If you had jumped right to this part, I would suggest you watch the entire video to have a better understanding of the final rating. The Defender is not easy to rate because you have to balance between judging with your head and judging with your heart. So I think it's more useful to give this ship not just one, not just two, but three ratings. One from the head, one from the heart and my very personal one. Judging from the head, the Defender is a ship that makes no sense. If you want a light fighter, almost any other light fighter is better at dog fighting. If you want a medium fighter, the Defender is good against NPCs, but its fragile hull makes it a less consistent choice against cheaper options like the Hornet. If you are looking for versatility, the Katas Black eclipses the Defender by being more versatile at half the price. The only reason to consider the Defender is to have a fast vehicle to taxi around Stanton. For all this reason, my from the head rate for the Defender is 4 out of 10. Now, judging from the heart, the Defender is still a bit lacking in combat and cost performance ratio, but when it comes to poor flying pleasure, it's one of the best. The feeling you get from piloting the ship is unique. It's eccentric, forgiving, predictable and just plain smooth. The sounds never get old and it's a pleasure to look at especially if you are into alien designs. And because it is so versatile, fast and nimble, the Defender is the perfect everyday ship when you just want to enjoy the verse. For all these reasons, my from the heart rate for the Defender is 8 out of 10. And finally, my very personal rate for the Defender is 7 out of 10. I love the flight model of the ship and the feeling I get when piloting it, but its minor annoyances become more relevant when you use the ship as much as I do. I'm talking about the need to reconfigure the monitors after each claim and the oddly angled thruster exhaust, without which I would have rated this ship one point higher. I think the Defender is one of the very few ships to date that could easily achieve a personal top score of 9 out of 10 or even 10 out of 10. Here's what I think is missing. Keeping monitor configuration between claims. 
every ship will benefit from this. Fix the angle of the thruster exhaust, give the Defender a different class. Performance wise the Defender is just fine, but it's not a light fighter, neither is it a medium one. It should be classified as multi-role, which I think is even more lore correct since uh, it is a Banu ship. Only outfit the Defender with Banu components and possibly give them some quirky features to make them appealing without paying OP. And change the internal layout a bit to fully embrace the versatility of the ship. My dream configuration will be similar to that of the Tena, a bunk bed for two, a small flip out toilet and why not, even a small cargo of one or two SCUs. In conclusion, the Benu are known for their pragmatism which is reflected in their use of only one ship model for a given purpose. Therefore, the Defender and the Merchantman are not just individual ships, but they represent an entire alien species and their approach to spacecraft design. It's evident that CIG recognizes the importance of these ships, as shown by the amount of love and care that went into the design of the Defender. But design is not everything and the Defender to be truly representative of the species that created it needs a clear, distinct gameplay direction that today is missing. In the next episode, the 315P, can you guess what I like and what I don't? Until next time, see you in the verse.